Welcome back. Well, the metal stocks, they've been doing pretty well. The last few sessions, you've seen the index itself recover a goodish bit. Global factors at play as well with uh, the dollar index cooling off and even the U.S. bond yields as well did cool off quite a bit. But we're joined now by Rakesh Arora, founder at GoIndiaStocks.com, who joins us on the show. Hi, Rakesh. Morning. Thanks so much uh, for speaking to us. Uh, tell us, how do you approach these stocks? You know, non-fair is that it seems a bit of a tailwind because there's talk about banning some Russian supplies. And various other capacities are shutting down. How do you weigh the two and your preference? So, Nigel, the easiest way to figure out whether there's actual physical shortage or not uh, is to look at physical premiums in various regions. And physical premiums have been dropping. So, despite all this chatter about, uh, you know, uh, European energy crisis leading to production cuts, the demand is uh, getting destroyed much faster. Uh, secondly, recently, the uptick in metal stocks have come from this uh, news about LME banning uh, Russian producers uh, to sell their material into LME. Uh, see, we need to understand that what has happened into oil uh, is likely to happen in aluminium and zinc and other metals also. Uh, there are willing buyers in form of uh, China and India who are willing to take the material. So I don't think the material uh, or supply is uh, reduced because of this LME decision. It is just a sentimental impact uh, in the near term. And uh, there's no real uh, take in physical premiums uh, to say that, uh, you know, there's any shortages because of this. Mm. Uh, what does one do with a stock like, say, Tata Steel, uh, Rakesh, now? I mean, that stock has done nothing for investors. If anything, it has just, you know, eroded wealth over the last one year. Um, at some point, do you see a turnaround? So, Sonia, uh, at some point, every stock will turn around. <laughs> but right now, it's not the time for uh, Tata Steel, I would think. Uh, there are two main factors. One is that we are looking at a very weak Q2 results coming in. And number two, you are already, you know, hearing all this news about uh, the way bond, pr bond prices have moved in Europe. And we are not sure what will be the impact on the pension liability for Tata Steel. So, these two things, uh, even though valuations are not that uh, you know, expensive, uh, I would think investors should stay away uh, till the time we have more clarity on these two issues. Mm. Rakesh, uh, can you explain that? Good morning, Prashant here. Explain that physical uh, premium point a little bit. I mean, what is what is that and what does it signify? Uh, one, and second, you uh, referred to oil, said what's happening to oil will happen to other commodities. Uh, and I don't know if you have a view specifically on oil itself. Many believe it's uh, breaking out of a four-month downtrend. Go on. So, Prashant, the physical premium is nothing but, you know, a charge over LME price. Uh, uh, we all see LME traded price, which is what we track. Uh, but when you physically deliver the material, there's an extra charge which you have to pay. And that is, depends on freight cost and demand supply and all those things. Okay. So, in Japan, uh, which is the highly tracked market for physical premium, uh, last quarter, the premium was around $133 for aluminum, and now it's dropped to around $88.90. So that tells you that there's very less uh, physical demand uh, for the material. Mm. Uh, to the second point, uh, what I was mentioning is that, uh, see, LME is the last sort buyer for uh, metals. Because when you're selling to other markets, uh, to actual consumers, you are getting that physical premium. So... I don't think uh, Rosal or any other Russian company would be looking to sell just to LME. Uh, they would be largely looking to sell to actual consumers. And uh, there are plenty in China and India who would be willing to buy that material uh, mm. if it's like $20 lower in terms of uh, premium. So the reference to oil was that India is buying uh, Russian oil at a cheaper prices at a discount to uh, the Brent crude price that we see. So the same thing applies to other metals also. Okay. All right. Uh, Rakesh, you know, in the past uh, many years that, you know, I'm tracking the sector and uh, you've been tracking longer than me as well. We have seen at times some of these metal stocks, they get some bit of a base at around half times price to book. Now, this time around, some of these balance sheets are in far better shape. Where do you think there'll be some kind of base in terms of a price to book value, if that's the matrix we should track? So, uh, Nigel, uh, you know, when companies are under high debt, uh, 0.5, or slightly lower is the right metric to look at. Uh, but when balance mm -hmm. sheets are fully required, uh, probably one time is where a stock should bottom out. Mm -hmm. uh, but since uh, we're discussing a company like Tata Steel, and there are unknowns in form of what could be the liability from uh, you know the pension, uh, probably I think it will be, historically it has bottomed at 0.5. Uh, 
now because Indian balance sheet etc is looking good, maybe 0.7. A quick word on Coal India if you track it. I mean, that stock has had a very good run and even the production data, the offtake has looked good in the month of September. Uh, you like it? So, see, Coal India has a strong tailwind. Uh, one, they are doing uh, very good work in terms of execution and producing coal, uh, trying to meet India's demand. And secondly, uh, you know, around 16-17% of the production is being sold at e-auction at around 350% plus uh, premium. So this is giving them a good tailwind and uh, they are likely to report, uh, you know, strong results. Uh, this can continue for another quarter or so uh, till the time European winter is out of the way. Uh, so there is still uh, some tailwinds to Coal India stock uh, even from here on. Okay. All right, Rakesh. Thanks so much uh, for joining and giving us your view. Clearly, you're sounding a little bit cautious on the space. Though, as you mentioned, that since balance sheets are in far better shape, some of these metal stocks, they may not go all the way to around 0.5 times price to book. Maybe we could see like Fatada Steel basing out at around 0.7 times. For the time being, slip into a short break. You come back. We'll get straight to pre-market opening. And we'll also be joined by Aman Desai of Aether Industries to talk about their business outlook.